In the part one video, we looked at the free fatty acid, what the elemental makeup of a free fatty acid. And basically it consists of a carbon backbone with a whole bunch of hydrogen atoms connected to the outside. Everywhere there was an available spot to attach an atom to the carbon, you could put a hydrogen atom. The only difference is on the alpha end of that chain, you had a carboxyl group. The storage form of fatty acids was a triglyceride, three of these free fatty acids sitting on the end of a glycerol molecule. We also reviewed hydrocarbons, which were basically that same carbon chain with the hydrogen atoms on the periphery around the outside. And some of the hydrocarbons we looked at were the simplest one, methane, with a single carbon in the center and four hydrogens on the outside. We also looked at ethane, propane, butane, pentane, all the way up to octane. And octane, we know, is a energy storing compound. We use octane to drive our vehicles. And if you look closely between the octane molecule and the free fatty acid, they're very, very similar. And that's why these hydrocarbon chains are the basis of fossil fuels. The animals that lived millions and millions of years ago and used the energy that they obtained from food to store as fat for later on never got a chance to use that. When their bodies died and they sink to the bottom of the ancient seas, all of those fatty stores were basically converted to the hydrocarbons or the fossil fuels that we use today. So what we use to drive our car was actually the energy that possibly a dinosaur or a single-celled animal used millions of years ago in preparation for future energy use and that's why they're called fossil fuels now what I've shown you on the free fatty acid is what we call a saturated fat. There is a hydrogen atom on every one of those carbons. Everywhere there's an available bond you put a hydrogen atom. Saturated fat, very linear molecule. That's not the whole story. I told you previously carbon is very special. It has four circulating electrons in its outer orbit, exactly half of what we need to make a full complement of eight, and that gives it some special qualities. Not only can it form these single bonds, as you can see in water, or in the hydrocarbon chain, it can also form double bonds, as you can see in CO2, carbon dioxide. There's a single carbon atom in the middle, one oxygen atom on each side. Each of the oxygens is bound to the carbon by a double bond. This still gives you that complement of eight, but instead of one set of electrons being shared between the oxygen and the carbon, you now have two. So that gives you two shared electrons on each side, plus the four on the carbon, still gives you that complement of eight. So carbon, very special, can actually form double and sometimes triple bonds in the appropriate setting. Our hydrocarbon chains and our fatty acids can also contain these double bonds. And what we do, if we take that saturated fat and we actually remove two of those hydrogen atoms and we put in that double bond, this is now an unsaturated fat. This is a mono unsaturated fat. And because we've removed those hydrogen atoms from the same side, the remaining hydrogen atoms repel each other and it actually puts a bend into that molecule so an unsaturated fat will curve a little bit and if you have multiple areas where there are double bonds this is a poly unsaturated fat which may bend even more if you take this unsaturated fat and you heat it in the presence of hydrogen, you can actually saturate or partially saturate that fat and turn it back into a saturated fat. And that is the process of hydrogenation. And we use that in the food industry to make shortenings or margarine. That bend in the molecule actually affords some of the physical properties of the fatty acids. You know that most margarines and butters and lard are gonna be solid at room temperature. And the reason they're solid is because those fatty acids in those particular fats are straight and you can pack them tight together. So that makes them more solid at room temperature. Whereas the unsaturated fats, because they have the bend in the molecule, are tough to pack together and are are normally liquid at room temperature. So that provides a mechanical rationale for why the unsaturated fats are generally liquid at room temperature. 
the type of unsaturated fat that we just discussed is called a cis fatty acid. Cis is Latin for on the same side. And that means that the two hydrogen atoms that remain across that double bond are on the same side of that carbon chain. Cis fatty acid. These are the fatty acids, the free fatty acids that generally occur in nature. You can also have a trans fatty acid. If you move one of those hydrogen atoms around to the other side, you no longer have that apposition between the two remaining hydrogen atoms and you actually straighten that molecule back out. So you can see from a configuration standpoint that this now looks more like a saturated fat. It is still labeled as an unsaturated fat, but this is an unsaturated trans fatty acid. The shape of these molecules also affects how they respond inside the body. Fats can't be absorbed directly into the bloodstream because you know if you try to mix oil and water, the oil will settle out. The same would be true in our blood. So we need some kind of transport vehicle and that vehicle is depicted right here in this picture. It's called a lipoprotein. And basically what it is is a ring of protein around the outside and it actually holds the fat and cholesterol in the middle or in the wall of this lipoprotein. Now, imagine that we had a whole bunch of saturated fats, a whole bunch of saturated triglycerides, and we were packing those into this molecule. Because these are all straight, you can pack a lot of those fats into that lipoprotein. If the ratio of the fat to protein is elevated, that is called a low density lipoprotein. And you may have heard of LDL and HDL. LDL stands for low density lipoprotein. And it's usually associated with diets high in a saturated fat. And the rationale again is because the molecules are straight, you can pack more of them in there, you have a higher fat to protein ratio that produces more low density lipoproteins. When you look at your labs, you'll see a line for LDL, low density lipoprotein. The cholesterol molecule, we talk about good and bad, cholesterol is exactly the same. It doesn't change whether it's good or bad, it's just the transport vehicle that it's in. If your diet is high in saturated fats, you probably have more LDLs which will come out on your labs as a bad cholesterol or low density lipoprotein. On the other hand, if your diet is a healthier diet that has more unsaturated fatty acids, you're gonna have a bend in those molecules. The triglycerides can't be packed as tightly. the fat to protein ratio will be less, this will be more of a high density lipoprotein. So the configuration of the fat determines whether you have more high density lipoproteins or low density lipoproteins. It's not the cholesterol molecule itself, it's basically what goes inside these lipoproteins that will determine the configuration.